So you love podcasts, and you want to listen to more amazing content, but you have no idea what to listen to. And your friends keep telling you about great episodes, yet you can never remember what they told you. Well, here's the answer. Good Pods. It's the social app dedicated to podcasts, where your friends, podcast listeners, and favorite podcast hosts all come together to share on their feeds what they recommend and what they listen to. You can connect to others, bookmark episodes, start a conversation about the episode, connect to the hosts, and most importantly, listen to great podcasts right in the Good Pods app. Download Good Pods wherever you get your apps and start sharing with a community that loves to listen. Good Pods, it's where to connect and listen. Think big, think positive. Never show any sign of weakness. Always go for the throat. Buy low, sell high. Fear, that's the other guy's problem. Nothing you have ever witnessed will prepare you for the absolute carnage you're about to witness. It's Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Hey, Thrive Out listeners, Lou Diamond here. Hope you're doing great. We've had a lot of fun episodes of late, uh, going back a couple of weeks to brought back Mike Richter and Kate O'Neill in minisodes. We had author A.M. Kaplan of the Echoes series, which was pretty great. Uh, Jen Grant, CEO of Appify, amazing company. And be on the lookout for some new episodes of Thrive Loud Live. Now we're on LinkedIn, which is really cool. Uh, tapping into the whole business community there. We're having on Wednesdays around 3 o'clock Eastern time is when we're doing it live. And obviously the episode gets put up on the show a couple of weeks later or days later in some instances. So you're going to hear some really great content throughout the month of October and November on Wednesdays. So tune into that. That's over on LinkedIn. You can find Thrive Loud Live. And today you're going to have a chance to hear Allison Barker, who heads up the ABXY Gallery in New York City. Really cool stuff. Just a note for your listeners here. I think when we recorded this, there were some events that were supposed to happen but didn't happen at ABXY. Best bet, head on over at the end when you hear the links in the show notes and or just when you hear Allison share the places you can go find her. Uh, check in to see what's the latest on the schedule and what's up there because it might have changed since the time we recorded it. But you'll really enjoy this conversation, someone following her passion, and really thriving loud each and every day. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode with Allison Barker. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. I'm your host, Lou Diamond. Today on Thrive Loud, we have the founder of the ABXY Art Gallery in New York City. She's been an art advisor and an entrepreneur for some time and is a master connector within the art community. Born and raised in New York City, Thrive Loud listeners, Allison Barker. Allison, how are you today? I'm great, thanks, how are you? I'm doing spectacular. I am fascinated by the world that you are in each and every day. Um, I've always been a big fan of art. I've never understood the art business so much. And when I had the opportunity to connect with you and learn a little bit about your studio, your platform, everything that you have going on. I thought it was fascinating. And I know that means our listeners will find it interesting. So Allison, to kick things off here, first of all, how did you get into this specific field? Has this been a passion of yours your whole life? Yes, for sure. Um, uh, I grew up in the city, so I've always been uh, you know, lucky enough to be surrounded by some of the best art institutions in the world. Um, I grew up you know, going to museums and galleries. I always... Uh, interned at galleries and museums. I uh, trained actually at Marlboro Gallery. Mm -hmm. um, so I like learned uh, just the ins and outs from some of the best industry leaders um, in the game. And I studied uh, art history at Vanderbilt and French literature. I did both. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I've, I've really always kind of had a passion for, for the arts. Uh, but the way the gallery started more specifically is um, I had been working for an artist and he always was needing studio assistance. Um, you know, 10 people here, 10 people there in cities all over the world. So I was constantly um, putting up ads for studio assistance and that kind of brought me into the world of uh, emerging artists. 
and I had seen a ton of portfolios by a ton of really talented kids. Um, and uh, am I going too long? Is that no? You sound great. I'm. I'm I'll keep going as I would love. Okay. I'll jump in when possible. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I had seen all these incredible um, young these portfolios of these incredible young artists, um, and uh, I started getting really interested in what was going on in the emerging scene. Um, and uh, while I was doing that, I was also freelance curating exhibits for a bunch of different galleries. I was writing for art magazines. I, I wrote for Art Republic, which uh, you know used to be an art magazine out of Asia, and White Wall, which is still you know one of the best art magazines out there. Um, and uh, so I was art advising and I was freelance curating and I was writing for art magazines. And uh, I decided for this one show in Tribeca um, that I would kind of uh, go back and, and, and talk to some of those artists I had hired to be studio assistants once upon a time. Uh, and when I went to, their, to them and asked, you know, do you have any new work? They said, no. I said, why not? <laughs> <laughs> and they said, you know, I have no money for art supplies and I have nowhere to make it. Mm. And I was like, well, I don't know, how much would it, would it cost? Um, and, you know, it's not, it's not a terrible amount of money for, for art supplies. So I picked a couple people and I gave them stipends and keys to my house. <laughs> um, and they started producing work, which I put in different exhibitions, and it started doing really well. Um, and then they started coming over all the time. <laughs> my house <laughs> filled with artists all the time and paint all the time. Um, and I had a friend come over um, who's an industry expert. Um, and I said to him, you know, am I crazy? Or are these kids really, really talented? And isn't this work super interesting? I was deeply immersed in the emerging scene and, and you know, to be honest, a little bit bored. Um, the art world is a place that functions, you know, the top tier galleries are looking at these very small classes of graduates from Yale and CalArts, right. a very few select number of programs and they fight over the graduates every year. And then the middle ones go to mid tier galleries and the, and the ones that don't get chosen end up teaching. Um, and, but outside of that sphere, you're not, you don't see a lot of, um, of artists that, that really make it. And I was, you know, I thought to myself, well, that really excludes a lot of, a lot of voices and a lot of perspectives that are super valuable and represent, you know, the majority of, of the world, the, the much greater majority of the world that can't afford to go to art school. Yeah. Um, so, you know, not only to get a, a BFA, which is a Bachelor of Fine Arts, but after that, you have to get an MFA. That's where these, these galleries are looking at MFA candidates from Yale. Right. Um, so, uh, I, uh, had this friend come over and I said, am I crazy or is this stuff incredible? And he said, you're not crazy. Uh, you should start doing programming and events. And I said, well, I know it's my apartment. Like this isn't a gallery. <laughs> and like, there's, it's a live work, isn't it? And I was like, yeah, I guess so. Technically. Um, and so I started doing programming and events out of my apartment. And so wait, I'm in here because so I, I, I leave this in your apartment help me understand the emerging work you said that like there's emerging art and and to to the untrained eye which i would put myself in this category and and some of our listeners what's different about this newer type of work that you're seeing versus maybe more traditional stuff and and is it a style is it a theme help the listeners understand a little bit about what caught your eye about this great content? And obviously others as well that eventually said, we need to get this out of your apartment and get this into a studio. Um, well, uh, well, that's a funny story. But um, what's different about these artists? Well, I think that when you're looking at, you know, only art that's coming out of these super academic programs, um, things start to get a little bit self-reflexive and it's art about art or art about the history of art, which has long excluded voices of color and minority voices, marginalized voices. Um, and so what's different is, is a lot of my artists are, are people of color. A lot of my artists are women. Um, I, uh, 
found, uh, and so, you know, just inherently it has something different because they're coming from a completely different approach. Um, one that's not necessarily been, you know, the acad this academic uh, dialogue that we're all allegedly participating in. This is, I think, more authentic to the world that, in which we actually live. Okay, I like this. So we're kind of taking, and I hate saying this word because it's not what it's meant to be, but like the class or the upper echelon of the elite and really getting real? Is that, is that kind of what you're seeing in this work? That's what I see in the work. I see it, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's just great. I think it's really much more, I mean, for me, this uh, work speaks to feelings and experiences that, that I have or that I notice around me, like the general vibe of the world rather than these super precise uh, questions about, uh, you know, that are rather academic. I mean, not that those pursuits are not interesting and important on the academic end of it, but I think there's a great deal of feeling that is lost when we start, you know, processizing over, um, you know, theories, you yeah. know, I don't know. In the no, no, I think, I think this is great. I, and, and I'm going to dive into this because I think this is exactly it in, in this, in the world we're in right now, which is trying to tap into so many different issues of, of race and injustice and all those things that are going on in, in a weird way, the art world has had that injustice going on as well. And here you are sitting at the front of some pretty talented artists and having a chance to bring it to the eyes of many that would never get a chance to see it. Allison, my question now is that funny story. So how did we move out of the apartment? And thanks for the segue. See, I did a little segueing here to get some background here. How did we get out of the apartment and into the studio? It's the gallery. So, uh, it's the gallery. The programming and uh, events were a big hit. People, people loved it. Right. Um, and uh, we had tons of people coming uh, to, the, to my apartment. It was a, it was a big loft in Soho. Um, so I could accommodate a lot of people. But uh, my neighbors were not as pleased with our success as I was. <laughs> um, and uh, they, uh, yes, they were really quite unhappy about it and quite frankly, a bit racist. Um, mm -hmm. Interesting. And, uh, yes, I was served with an eviction notice. Wow. Um, yep, yeah, it was really bad. Uh, so at that point I, uh, was like, well, I really don't know what to do here. Um, and I turned to my family and I asked my uncle, who's a big art collector, uh, to come down and check out what we were doing and, uh, see if he thought that it might be a good idea to open a proper gallery together. Mm -hmm. Um, and he did, and he met the artists and he, uh, fell in love with their work and them and the whole... Um, project it really is refreshing it really is different um, and it really is great so uh, with uh, with his help and him agreeing to partner with me I set out to find us a space and I did um, and now we have this beautiful beautiful storefront gallery on Clinton Street in the Lower East Side so this is awesome and, and I love entrepreneurs who who follow their passion and get to see it through. And, and it's, it's really great because you're not only helping to fulfill your own passion and have your own gallery with your own name on it. We'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, but we'll also recognize that you're helping connect uh, 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 the world to content that they really couldn't actually get before. How does that make you feel, by the way, when you recognize that you see on display uh, the art of these people that never would have had this opportunity had it not been for you. It makes me feel great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You didn't, you can elaborate on it, but I guess more along the lines of it, it's, is, is there a sense of that rewarding each time you open up the door and, and walk into the studio, into the gallery? Yes, absolutely. Um, for sure. And, and it's also, so what was great about the space was it's not only the artists that are, um, that are new and different. It's the space we brought together all kinds of different people. So I brought to, I'm really also about expanding this uh, world for collectors as well. I think the art world can be a terribly intimidating place, even for someone, even for me, I grew up in New York. I've been going to galleries and working in galleries my entire life. And still like 
I find it to be a little bit intimidating to go into some of these big box galleries in Chelsea. Um, you can imagine the amount of times people call, call the gallery and say, how much is it to get in? And I say, it's free. It's free to go into all galleries. And people are like, what? Um, and people don't even know that. So uh, we're all about kind of breaking down those barriers and making this a more welcoming place, not only for artists, but also for young collectors. That's a big, important thing to me too. Let's talk about the entrepreneur in you because uh, this is challenge. There's the, your eye of art and being able to connect these artists. That's the passion piece. Let's talk about the business side of this. What is it like running the gallery? There's a lot of, you know, daily stuff you got to do to run, to run a business. Um, what's that been like for you as the entrepreneur? <laughs> Extremely challenging. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, the creative piece to me comes, comes quite naturally. Um, the business piece, uh, is uh, just a lot of nuts and bolts, right? But I have, uh, I have a very dedicated, very small team um, that helps me tremendously. It's really important to find people that you trust and that you like working with. Um, you know, our accounting guy was actually went to Stuyvesant with one of my artists. Um, my gallery manager, we met through... Um, like NIFA, the New York Foundation for the Arts has been incredible for finding people. Um, but, you know, you have to hire, you have to have a great team. Uh, because like something that I've, that's always resonated with me is you never want to be the smartest person in the room. You want to hire people who are better than you at whatever it is that you're, you're outsourcing because you can't possibly do everything alone. Very true. Well, the great words here. Allison, Let's talk about the world we're in right now. We're recording this in mid-September. And obviously, New York City has, specifically back in March and April, went through COVID in, at the epicenter of the whole world and is still dealing with it today. How have you been dealing with COVID uh, at the gallery, yourself, everything in your community over there? Maybe share with the listeners what, what it's like in, in the art world uh, right now in these challenging times in the city. Yeah. Um you know, we've been, we've been lucky to be doing quite well. I mean, uh, I think emotionally and mentally, this has been really hard on everyone. The first couple months of COVID were, were awful. Um, in New York City, and especially on the Lower East Side, uh, it was just ambulances all day long. And we definitely, we closed the gallery completely. Um, and, but by June, April, May, yeah. April, May, we were like completely closed. And then June, we opened up by appointment only. And that's how we've been uh, working. But uh, we're lucky enough to have an incredible photographer. And that's a super important piece of this. Um, you've got to have great images, especially if you're going to start selling stuff virtually. You know, people do um, all have reasons to come into the city. I, I thought about maybe moving the gallery somewhere that would be less expensive, but I, I ultimately decided New York is going to come back, you know? Um, and I think it'll come back faster than people expected. I think uh, we just got to hang in there and it's important to, to stay and, and, and be part of rebuilding um, this city and, and the, the businesses around us. Like it's just so important. Um, I'll even add to this, Allison. I mean, you mentioned that timeline that this took place and right around June when you were reopening was when all of the racial injustices and actions around the, the, our, our country and the globe and all the marching was going on as well. And here you are um, representing a lot of those people of color and people who have been improperly served that way. So was, was that tapping into you as this as you were reopening the gallery and, and getting everybody, um, you know, not only promoting the, the work, but also promoting the awareness of what you do. Well, certainly uh, it was, uh, for me, it was this kind of like hand-wringing moment. Like, this is what I've been talking about this entire time. <laughs> um, you know, I've, I've been uh, dedicated to this, um, you know, the whole spirit of Black Lives Matter you know, since our inception in 2017 is when we opened this space. But, you know, I've been working with uh, Black artists since 2014, at least. Um, so uh, there was a, a piece of me that was just like, finally, 
finally, finally, finally, the world seems to be catching up and, and keeping pace with this, these huge issues that we've been talking about. Um, so it was a relief, you know, not to sound like these horrible things are a relief, but yeah. they've been happening. They've been happening forever and ever and ever. So the, the relief bit is really just the rest of the world kind of waking up and, and having the, the pause and the moment to, to really take it in and consider the broader injustices that uh, create these circumstances. So let's do this. Uh, I'm going to ask you a signature question on the program here, and I'm very interested to see where this goes. Um, you, you have made it through this period of COVID. You have, as you said, the, the gallery has, has been doing quite well. You've been an innovator in the space and a connector of artists and providing people access to content they couldn't get, which is awesome, which is why you're on Thrive Loud and why you thrive each and every day. But we also have off days when we're not kicking on all cylinders. Allison, when you have trouble thriving, who or what practice do you seek to get yourself back on the thriving track? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I have been uh, meditating every day since COVID. Cool. Um, so I do, I do a meditation. My aunt sent it to me, um, like Abraham Hicks. I don't know if you've heard of that. I actually have. Yeah, very cool. So, so I do the I do a rotation of uh, physical well-being, relationships well-being, and abundance. Um, so one of those every day that tends to to help start the day in a in a positive direction. Um, but what else do I do to to chill out? I don't know. I talk to my artists. I I have a very sweet little French bulldog who always lifts my spirit. Um, <laughs> what's, the, what's the bulldog's name? His name is Gordo. Okay, of course. That's fitting. I could see that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, just and also just connecting with people, just talking to friends. If you feel like you're in a bad mood, and it's so hard because we often, that's, that's the French Bulldog, sorry, squeaking his toy in the background. No worries. Oh. <laughs> I, I've told many of the listeners over and over again, if they've listened to the episode, we need a dog cast. We really do. Just take all the dogs of all the guests we have in the program. Just put them on. See what would happen. It would be interesting. Oh my gosh. Oh. Gordo would uh, be entertaining for hours. He's so cute. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that it's really it's been really difficult without being able to see people and yeah. see as, nearly as many people as you normally would. So that without that social aspect, you know, particularly during COVID, um, I find that even just like a Zoom call or a regular call with someone that you love or that you respect or whose opinion you value is really, really, really helpful. And so you don't get too stuck in your own head. Awesome. Let's do this, Allison. Let's do the plug section of the show, the admin piece. Share with the listeners all the places people can find the gallery, websites, the physical location. We'll give all that. We'll put it all in the show notes. And any current exhibitions going on um, right now, this is dropping right at the end of September, beginning of October. And what's next at the gallery? So this is your plug section to plug away, Allison. Okay. Um, so the website is very easy. It's abxy.co, not .com, .co. Um, abxy stands for Allison Barker and you. Uh, this was always, you know, a collaborative effort. And so that's where the, the name came from. Um, we uh, are located at 9 Clinton Street between Houston and Stanton in Manhattan's bustling Lower East Side. It actually is... Uh, quite lively over here, despite COVID and all of those things. Um, there's, a, there's really still like a lot of people at town on the side of town. Um, then abxy.co, 9 Clinton Street. Uh, on Instagram, we are at abxyles. It stands for abxy Lower East Side. Cool. And uh, we don't really tweet so much. <laughs> uh, that's it, right, John? And who's currently on an exhibition right now and what's coming up? We have an exhibition by my very first ABXY artist named Vernon O'Mealy. It's his second solo show with the gallery. It's called Flowers for Mini. And uh, it's incredible. It's all these black and white still. It's what I say. I, my little quip on the, on the show is these are the bouquets of hyperpolarization and climate collapse. Right. <laughs> so, uh, Fitting. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, they really speak to uh, to what we're all going through right now um, in terms of the environment, you know, both the actual environment and the political landscape. So true. Thank you for that. Ready to go down Fun Street with me here, Allison, for our listeners and yourself? Should be, it's not too painful, I promise. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. First of all, share with the listeners your all-time favorite movie. All-time favorite movie. I mean, Breakfast at Tiffany's is my favorite movie. Okay. Um, she yeah. always went to Tiffany's when she got the Mean Reds. I used to go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Uh, that was my like happy place. And so it's just such a good New York story. And I love Audrey Hepburn. Yeah. Who, who, who wouldn't? She's just awesome on all fronts. Okay. This is going to be the speed round here. I'm basically going to ask you a quick question. And with the first thing that comes to your mind, and these are all things that make you feel good and kind of make you thrive. So ready, ready to rock and roll? Yes. Okay. A song that picks you up or that you just love to listen to? Uh, 101 FM by Lil Sims. Okay. A favorite food that's not a dessert? Pizza. A favorite dessert? Cupcakes. An activity you wish you did more of? Sleep. An activity you wish you did less of? Cutting my hair. I have to cut my hair. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's interesting. <laughs> if you can snap your fingers and go anywhere in the world, where are you? London. Thrive Loud listeners, everyone got a chance to check out Allison Barker, her amazing gallery. Thank you so much for bringing all this great content to the world and for coming on Thrive Loud today. Oh my God, thank you. This was so much fun. And to all our listeners out there, thank you for joining us. And until next time, keep thriving onward and upward. And remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Check us out on the web 